So another carbon nucleophile we'll talk about involves what's called the Wittig reaction. That W's uh, pronounced with the letter V, like Volkswagen. So the Wittig reaction here converts a carbon-oxygen double bond into a carbon-carbon double bond. So a great way to turn a ketone aldehyde into an alkene. So if you're keeping track for synthesis purposes, there's another way to do it. But this in this chapter is definitely the most direct way. Uh, and if we're going to test you on synthesis on this kind of a concept, that's where we're going to get you. So carbon-oxygen double bond to carbon-carbon double bond. So in this case, your nucleophile here is what we call a phosphoilid. So, and in this case, we've got a carbon with a negative charge right there. And it's stabilized by the fact that it's right next to the electron withdrawing phosphorus here. So, but a very strong nucleophile, we'll, we'll, we'll show how to form it a little bit here. But for now, we'll just concern ourselves with how to use it. So great nucleophile, he's going to come in and do nucleophilic attack kicking the pi electrons up to the carbonyl. So that's going to give us this structure right here. So again, this carbon right here is this carbon right here. It's now attached uh, to what used to be the carbonyl carbon. Now one thing to note, I've drawn that phosphoylid. It's nice and easy to recognize. Oh yeah, a negative charge on a carbon. That's a great nucleophile. One thing to note is sometimes people will show the other resonance contributor. So in the other resonance contributor looks like this. So it has phosphorus breaking the octet rule. Uh, and the unfortunate thing about this resonance contributor is that the carbon and the phosphorus, neither one actually has uh, a formal charge in this structure. So if you look at the two resonance structures, the first is definitely the easier of the two to recognize that carbon's a nucleophile here. You'd have to take into account the resonance to figure out that there's a partial negative on the carbon, a partial positive on the phosphorus. And so from this resonance contributor, it's not so easy to see that he's the nucleophile, but it is one that could show up on a predict the products type question. So you've got to be able to recognize it as this and recognize that it's this carbon is actually acting as the nucleophile. So, but back into our mechanism here. So now we've attached this and we've got a negative formal charge on the oxygen here. And right next to it is a positive formal charge on phosphorus. And it's not rocket science to figure out what's going to happen here. So, but oxygen's just going to make a bond to phosphorus. And so we're going to temporarily form a four-membered ring here, but this, this leaves oxygen with no longer having a negative formal charge and phosphorus no longer having a positive formal charge. Now, phosphorus is violating the octet rule, but being the third row or lower on the uh, periodic table, he's totally allowed to go over the octet rule here. So, and in this case, believe it or not, we are just one step away from having our alkene here. So it turns out we are going to break this bond and we're going to break this bond simultaneously. And so we're going to end up with a double bond right here and a double bond right here. And the other two sigma bonds here and here are going to be broken. And so now we're going to have two separate products. And we don't really care about this guy. We're just going to throw him away. But our organic product is this one. And we've created our brand new carbon-carbon double bond. And again, that was that bond that was forming right there. Actually, let's not write an arrow in red like my other red arrows showing the movement of electrons. So, but that is the Wittig reaction, turning a carbon oxygen double bond into a carbon-carbon double bond. So if you look at the mechanism here, it was three steps, but there's more to it than that. It turns out we're also going to have to show how this phosphoilid was created. So, and while we're here, I also want to talk about one more aspect of this. So we want to look back from a retrosynthesis perspective and take a look. And here we're making it between what used to be a primary carbon and what here is a secondary carbon. So and we'll find out that when you make the nucleophile, the phosphoilid, we're going to make it via an SN2 reaction. So if I have my choice, whichever side is less substituted, that's the side I would want to have designated as coming from the phosphoilid, with the other side that's more substituted being the ketone or aldehyde, as the case may be, ketone in this case. So whichever side's less substituted, that's the one you want to build into your phosphoilid if you have the choice in a synthesis problem. But let's take a look and see how to make that phosphoilid. So to make your phosphoilid, you're actually starting off with an alkyl halide here, and you're adding triphenylphosphine here, and it's a great nucleophile. Uh, phosphorus is very polarizable, and so being a good nucleophile, he's going to come and do backside attack, kick off the leaving group. So and that's just straight up SN2. And that leaves you with this intermediate right here, and this intermediate right here has a couple of hydrogens on this carbon. So and here's our phosphoilid, and we realize if you look closely, the phosphoilid here is just the conjugate base of our intermediate here. And so all we got to do is deprotonate it. Well, it turns out deprotonating that hydrogen is not going to be the easiest thing in the world. And so we're going to use butyl lithium. And organolithium lithium is by far the most common one here. And that's butyl lithium. And it's both a strong nucleophile and a strong base. And in this case, it's actually going to be acting as a strong base. And so it's this pair of electrons right here that's going to come and deprotonate that hydrogen. 
cool. And that's how we form so our phosphoilid. That lovely deprotonation is the last part of it. So SN2 followed by a proton transfer, and you've got your phosphoilid, and now he's ready to do the rest of the Wittig reaction.